to note one. Part, Part two. two. Episode 114. 114. <laughs> I, I just wrote it down. I couldn't remember. All right. So I'm Sheila, also known as Sheila D37. And I'm Wendy, also known as Penny Wendy. Welcome to our show today. So for those of you who have been watching us, we've been doing a knit along, and yes. today is the last day for the knit along. As a matter of fact, I should probably lock that thread. <laughs> oh yeah, lock the thread because we just prior we to just, recording, we just drew numbers. So. We just drew numbers for three prizes. Yay! And, and we'll announce um, those at the I end. I don't know. I didn't get any suggestions on the next knit along. Did you? Probably because I didn't actually post the thread until like. I know, but I, I would have thought. Yeah, but I read all. Nobody suggested it on okay, that thread. Well, then we're so, doing lace. We're doing lace. And by lace, lace. <laughs> by lace, we mean that it has a lace pattern involved in the thing. It can be in any weight. Um, it can be anything with lace in it. It could be a baby hat, a blanket, a socks. sweater, socks, mittens, washcloths, washcloth, wash wash anything that has a pattern anything, of yarn overs in it can right. qualify. Anything that has a knit to and a yarn over to signify holes <laughs> that you did deliberately. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> will qualify. For example, this would qualify as lace. See that pattern right there? That is a yeah, lace pattern. Right. Also, um, we want to make a note that if you want every picture or project Yes. And yes. If you want every picture or project to qualify, it needs to go under its own posting. Right. So if you make two things, don't post both pictures in one post because then you're only entered once. Post them each in a different picture. And also, I want to tell people, it was brought to my attention that if you cross post, like we encourage you to use things that you that are involved in other knit-alongs, whatever, we don't care. Um, we encourage you to post them in our... Um, knit along threads but apparently if you post the same thing too many times in one day you will get a notice saying that that it may be spam and you have to get permission from the group administrator to post it um, that is a message that is generated by Ravelry automatically yeah. if your posts seem too similar and they're in more than one group. So just ignore it and continue posting. You should never need permission from us to post a picture that you've posted in another group. So just know that right from the start. We have no policy against cross-posting. I suppose if somebody was like spamming messages for Viagra, we would delete it or something. But um, if you're posting in the contest group, then do not worry about this message. Just click the ignore button or whatever it is and continue on your way. Don't don't worry about that. Because I would hate to think that this has happened in the past and people were like, oh, I don't have want to have to bother them for permission you don't need permission so no. just ignore that message definitely not so um yeah i will after i post this show which hopefully will be sooner than last time <laughs> well you know it went up on blip on saturday and on itunes on saturday but i forgot to post it a on the blog and start a thread until a couple of days later because we were gone all day saturday and then sunday i just was busy right um, it's going to be similar this week. This will probably be posted to Blip and iTunes sometime on Saturday morning if it's done early enough before I have to leave because I'm going to be out of town tomorrow. Um, so if you don't see it on the blog or in the thread, check iTunes or Blip because it's probably already up if you don't want to wait. Well, let's let's start the project. actual show seven minutes in. Oh, minus a minute. We were a minute late. Oh, that's right. Because sometimes we record a little bit before we actually get started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no news here. I am not on anything new. I am still working on my Well, this is your On the Needles. On so. the Needles dance card, my Wallaby sweater. Um, really no progress. Uh, I did check to see how much yarn I have. Mm -hmm. And I have two more full skeins at home mm -hmm. of this. Let's see. I love that bag. That's a Lolo bag. No, no. I'm going to see Lolo tomorrow. Are you I so know. jealous of me? <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. her. So I have, oh, see, yeah. I have two more of these at home plus these two, so I have four. Okay. I think I'll have plenty. I think you'll be fine. Um, plus I have two shoulders. more blacks, if yeah. not more, and maybe one more of these, but I'm not sure. So I have plenty of yarn. Yeah. It's just I may not, the color scheme may vary a little. Yeah, you may have to, like, put some stripes in where you weren't necessarily. Exactly. Exactly. I may make the cuffs of the, like, 
where I have it black and tan here on the bottom, I may do that the black a little bit longer. I yeah. may have it go further up than I had planned. So I'm not worried about it. I have plenty of yarn if I actually get my button gear and actually knit this. It's been hard though. I come home from work and I just I have no energy hardly to do laundry, never mind anything else, and I just read because it's so mindless. Yeah. You know, this this is mindless, but I don't know. So that's it? That's it. Did you tell what it's called? It's the Wonderful Wallaby. <laughs> I thought I did. I don't know. I wasn't listening. Oh, thanks. Wonderful Wallaby. <laughs> I was trying to read this pattern oh, because I'm having so much trouble with it. It's Sorry for the Wallaby. by Cottage Creations. You this can only purchase booklet. it. As far as we know, as a hard copy. Form. As far as I know, I don't think it's. I become, haven't looked lately. I haven't either, but I don't think it's uh, become. And you can digitized. make one for like from child to adult. There's it's sizes from size two for children, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve for children. I knit, I think, the size twelve for my son last year. Yeah, that's right. And uh, it was patterns chunky, so that was good. Up to adults, petite, small, medium, large, extra large, and the Wisconsin Wallaby is a super size. Just to give you an idea on the super size of that one, let's see. One, two, three. Oh, Washington Wallaby, the Whalen Wallaby. Uh, you're looking at, let's see, yarn required about size 12, five skeins for that. No, that can't be right. Doesn't mean, oh, that's oh, that's why because I'm looking at the children's adult. <laughs> Here we go. So the super size, which fits the 48 chest, the Wisconsin Wallaby, mm -hmm. 10 skeins of yarn. Wow. And their skeins, uh, they're going based off I think 200 yards, give wow. or take, I believe, uh, because that would obviously vary depending yeah. on the yardage, and the highest stitch count on the Wisconsin Wallaby, 232 stitches. Cool. You would really have to love somebody to do that one. Oh, I think so. <laughs> That's a lot of stocking net, my friends. Yeah, it is. Um, so what is this situation that's happening here? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> With you, it's hard to tell. I know. It's... You got yourself all discombobulated I, I do in a way that I thought for a second I thought I somehow had like put it through a hole in that like a yarn over but uh, that know, would it's... suck there we go <laughs> sorry <laughs> about that I'm done um yeah I only knit on one thing this week I'm just going to be honest about it I knit on the crooked walking shawl by Ann Hansen I'm in the middle of a row but let me see if I can find a place where it's This is what it looks like on the right side. And yes, why yes, that is very few rows considering how long I have had to knit it. And that is because this is the third time that I have knit this lace. It is not the fault of the pattern. I want to make that very clear. The pattern is very well written, but for whatever reason, I make at least one mistake per row. I don't, I can't figure out how I'm making this mistake, but I will do a row and then I'll do the rest row which is just purling back and then I will do the next row and inevitably on one of these little crooked walking path things I will have an extra stitch so I will have to knit two together and it has happened on almost every row I also made a huge mistake I okay so I, I, I knit it the first time and then I realized because the, the walking stripes go like this on one side of the center, and on the other side of the center, they go like this, like they mirror each other. So the first time that I knit it, halfway through the second half, I went from making all the slants this way to suddenly making them that way, like in the middle. So <laughs> when I went a few more rows, a few rows later, I realized there was a situation occurring. So I had to rip all the way back because it was like, a good 20 repeats or 10 oh. repeats. It was a lot of like individual pattern repeats that were wrong. It wasn't something I could rip back to. I would have had to rip back like half of the second half. So then I re-knit it 
got about past the first zag into the second one and realized that I had, it's supposed to be stockinette and then um, garter stitch. So it's a stockinette oh. one and the next one's garter stitch and the next one's stockinette. It alternates. At several points, I had just kept doing stockinette randomly. So I tried ripping them down and I ended up with a mess. <laughs> So I ripped back again, and every time I rip back, I'm ripping back to the garter, and this is about how far I was the second time that I ripped back. And then the third time, I pulled the thing out of the bag, and like 15 stitches dropped um. off the needles, and when I tried to pick them back up, it got into a mess, and... That was only a few rows into it, and I was like, I am not even dealing with this because I've ripped back so much. Up. Oh, yeah, the yarn's holding up great. So I ripped it back again. Now I am on, this is the third time I have knit this, which is why it's only about an inch long. And I noticed last night, I'll show it on here. I don't know if you can see it. This is a place where I did stockinette in the middle of one of my garter crooked paths. And do you know what? I don't care. I am not ripping it back again. I am just living with it. My new motto for this project is always moving forward. That is a motto that I got from my friend Diane, Diane and Oz. When she is sick of a project, she says, I don't care what happens anymore. I am finished. I'm just going to keep going. Find a mistake, knit two together. Put a yarn <laughs> over in, whatever. Just keep going forward until it's done. Because ain't nobody going to have time to look at this no. and see that I made a mistake right there. So um, if you looked at this closely, you would see numerous places where I have knit two together when I have too many stitches on one of my paths. Or thrown a yarn over in at the end because I, had, I was missing a stitch. And then, of course, my latest find is this small, it's a bizarre small, it's not the whole thing. It's part of it where I did stuck a net instead of pearl garter stitch so whatever um yeah the yarn is really great i'm knitting this on us3 let me tell you the, all the information i like how signature has it like written on the needles <laughs> us3 3.25 millimeter needles they're signature needles that i got from my friend angel which i love <laughs> and i am knitting it out of nightingale fibers um it is sport weight baby alpaca silk blend 8020 and it is their it's their Martha base in the color gray sky and um, each of these skeins has almost 300 yards and I have about how does this keep getting tangled on this? I don't know I just untangled it and it was tangled again I have about this much left of the first skein so Hopefully, and it's, I have ripped this out a million times, and it does have a halo. I don't know if you can see this on your screen. It has quite a halo. It has held up remarkably well, considering the number of times that I have ripped this out. I mean, it looks good. I'm just going to give fair warning. It looks like the neighbors are going to have their lawn mowed again oh, today. Really? How many Apparently, times? they have a Friday. Apparently, Friday is their appointment day. day. At around so, 11 o'clock. This is literally all that I knit on, and I have to tell you the reason is because Sheila's working and that tires her out. I am trying to walk 10,000 steps a day. I kid you not. There are days when I have literally walked for two hours. I only have time in my life right now to walk, run errands, drive my kids places, eat, and sleep. <laughs> I just do. At the end of the night, I am on the couch like this. I'm so tired, I can barely watch television. Just watch television. Like, just television. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I have not done a lot of knitting this week. Hopefully, hopefully that's going to change as I get oh, more me. used so to what... Sorry. I, I think my problem is, if I was running like I normally do, I would be able to get Your 10, steps, steps in steps so much faster, like in half an hour instead of hours of walking. But because I have a hip injury that I am rehabbing. That's Make sure you rehab. rehab it for the full length. I'm rehabbing, yeah. <laughs> you know, if I had paid attention 
this I would be able to run right now. Yeah, probably. Yeah, if they tell you to rehab an injury for at least four to six weeks, wait four to six weeks before you try running, or you will re-injure it, and then you will just be behind. And um, that was it for my On the Needles. I'm not even going to show you my projects of shame, except to mention that the Vortex blanket, my husband is seeing the recipient of the Vortex blanket tonight. He has his prosthetic leg. He does. And he ha is walking. He sent a video in of him walking on cool. it. He's walking pretty well. Um, he needs a couple more months because he can't wear it all the time yet. Yeah. It takes a while. Um, be a body to get used to it. Yes, but then he will be back into work. Um, but he did send a video, and he is coming out tonight with them. Um, is he going to get the blanket tonight? Why? No. No, he is not, because I am not done with the blanket. The blanket is becoming my nemesis. And uh, literally, there's, like, maybe four hours of work to do on it. Like, oh, really? if I just sat down to it, yeah. I just can't make myself do it right now. And, um... I'm, I, I want to cast on so many other things, but my rule that I have made is I cannot cast on anything else until that blanket oh. is done. That's just why I'm only knitting on this thing. And I swear, like, it's given me trouble because it knows I should finish the blanket. Well, it's funny because I was thinking the other day of putting this aside and casting on something else. But I'm like, And no, it's like, if you do no, that, it'll never come back, yes. No, it never will. So, yes, that is all I have on the needles today. Rate your date. We got nothing. When was the last rate my date I had six weeks ago, maybe? I don't know. I don't it's even remember It's been two weeks was. since I had a date to rate. It was my uh, clappity, is what it was. I used to tack on something. And knocking stuff on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no rate and date here. No, me either. Nothing this week. Uh, I, I toyed with casting tricks. on a baby sock just to have something to show, and then I was, like, just too tired to do it. Future dates. Future dates. Well, you know, it's funny. I was thinking of a future date this morning. So, I keep talking about how I need slippers. Yeah. So, there is a pattern that I favored a long time ago. I really do not like walking around my house barefoot. Yes. I don't like feeling any bit of crumbs on my feet. I just don't. Yes. So, there is a <laughs> pattern. I know. I sweep them up, but there's still something, you know, you still, there's stuff... You like, still I'm like, things. how many crumbs are in your there house? There isn't a lot, but <laughs> I know. I just this just funny. Uh, step on a Lego. Just yeah, I don't like walking around good. my house in bare feet. There is a pattern that is basically a felted flip flop. Oh, cool! And I, it's very similar to the felted clogs, the sole of it right. anyway. So I think I could probably just do it, but that would mean. Me having to finish the sweater first, because I really do need to finish this before I cast on. So, I don't know. We'll see. I was thinking about it this morning about, gee, how quickly could I probably whip that out? Yeah, it would be quick if I actually sat down and knit. I was thinking, I'm going to be going over my neighbor's house. I could probably knit today. I'm like, not in humid weather, I won't. Uh, Problem yeah. is, is summertime for me is really where I knit even less. Well, you don't keep your house as... Cool we I don't do. have AC in our house at all. As a matter of fact, I had the fan blowing and I had my pajama top and bottom on. I wear boxer shorts in the summertime and I was like this <laughs> with the fan blowing. <laughs> my husband came into bed. I'm like, really? Do I have to give you some of the room? Because <laughs> I don't want to move. Yeah, we. It's I, really warm and humid right now, and uh, and we're not ready for it because there's no way in heck I'm putting my AC in the window in May. Yeah, um, my AC has been in the window since um, the beginning of May because there was one really humid day, and it was it wasn't in to be cooling the house. Um, I it has a function called dry, where it's basically like a de dehumidifier, and I ran it because my house was so damp it was like living in a swamp. I don't know. How it got that way. So much yeah, better so now. Yeah, so my house is going to be really bad today when I go home. But, um, I don't know. I just, we don't have it. And I can't knit. My hands get all sweaty and yucky. They feel like they're dirty. Yes, I know that feeling. But I am working this weekend, uh, Sunday, so I'm hoping to power through some more. I'd like to at least get up to the point where I can cast on for the sleeves. 
So I think that'll go quick because they're going to be small. Right. Those will go very quickly. And they're like a, a project almost, you know? Like yeah. I mean, I won't do them two at a time because I don't like doing two at a time no. anymore. Um, but they'll, yeah, one little quick project and then you join it and then you start decreasing. I know. And then it's getting smaller. That's and then like I just the weave in ends. So yeah, I'm getting there. I'd say I'm almost You're close. 40% done. See? I, I would say so. So um, those are your future dates? That's my future date. And the baby blanket at some point. But. My future dates, um, I've said before, I have the seashell lace shawl um, ready to go. Actually, I have a picture of it right here because it's queued up on my... What are you doing with that again? What? I'm using Blue Moon Fiber oh, Arts right. Silk Thread 2, and it's, it's called something about spruce... But it's really a silvery gray. I guess some spruces are silver. Silver spruce. Yeah. It's very pretty. In my head, spruce means dark green. But um, there are things called silver spruces that are more gray than green. Anyway, it's beautiful. 100% silk yarn. I'm going to do it. It's all... I, I wound it into a cake. So it's ready to go. Um, I just am not allowing myself to cast on any more projects until I finish that blanket. So, you know, what I should do tomorrow, because I'm going to be on a long car drive, is I should take that blanket with you me. You should, because it's, and it's be really forced. portable. It's very portable, because I only have to take and you're not driving. So. I'm not driving. I should take that, and I should work on You could probably get that. at least one square done. I, tell me about it. I only need to do two squares. That's it? I know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and this is so close. Like, so four hours. So, Lisa, make sure she takes... <laughs> Yeah. The blanket, nothing I'm gonna else. I'm going to have to take the blanket with me. Um, I was going to take this shawl, but no, I think I need to take the blanket and so that it is the only thing that I can possibly work on, and I have no choice but to knit on it. Yeah. Crochet on it, I guess you would say. So this is one of my um, future dates. And the other one is the Hero Sweater, which is by Julia Farwell Clay. Oh, yeah. And it is a color work sweater. And I have the yarn for it that I bought from Webs. That is the next thing that I'm definitely going to cast on. I'm going to do that as soon as the blanket's done. I know if I cast the sweater on before the blanket is done, the sweater will be done before the blanket is. Oh, yes. Is. Um, and I don't really want that to happen. So other than that, I've, I have been perusing the baby thread. And let me tell you, there's a bunch of stuff in there I want to do. Her cue kind of got bigger. It did. There is some really cute stuff in there. I have the baby ducks. I think the other thing that I have up on here is the baby duck. No, I don't have that up anymore. But um, I also going to make some um, duck booties. I have the yarn for it and everything. But again, I cannot cast those on until I get the blanket done. So it would be to my benefit to work on it tomorrow. Yeah. So that, that it's like, I think I'm going to be in the car for like five or six hours. I could potentially finish it in that time. There you go. Yeah, I think that's going to happen. So that's it for future dates. Bottles and blue? Is that what comes next? Or oh, it... um, whirlwind romance. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Then bottles and blue? Or gossip and... Crushes and heartbreak. Crushes and heartbreak. We don't have show notes, by the way. Having in a couple of it, and we should at least write down a PowerPoint so that we know, you know, a little outline. Like of a little we, index card, yeah. even that would be a good They're idea. Right up there, so that we know what we're doing. So you know, crushes I'm and heartbreaks. How to do that? Crushes and heartbreaks. Uh, you go. I don't know if I have any crushes and heartbreaks. Um. Hmm. Think. 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 Laundry's getting a little bit better. <laughs> Not much. Work's going good. I did apply for another job that was more local, so keep your fingers crossed that I get a call for an interview. Can I just interrupt you one second? Cool. I had a dream about Sheila two nights ago. It was so real. I dreamed I went over to your house, and we were talking, and you were walking into your upstairs, and you turned around and said, oh, by the way, and you were on the phone, and you said, guess what, and you hung up, and you said, guess who I just got off the phone with? My boss, I don't have a job anymore on the overnight thing. And I was like, yes. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, my boss on overnight asked if I could work July 4th night. Because right now she still only has two of us. Wow. So the days that I can only work, actually I'm only working two. 
this week. I only worked two this week. One girl is working four, and they must have picked up someone else somewhere else. Wow. I'm like, that's ridiculous. Because if I get this job that I applied for, it's 32 hours plus benefits plus alternating weekends, I'm not going to be working the overnight job. Right. So, think of me. Well, in my dream, you had just, she had just told her she didn't need you anymore, and I was rejoicing. That was my dream. So, when um, you said the other night, when you texted me and said that you had worked or you were going to work or something, I was like, what? <laughs> it seems so Why real to me. To I was like, where? <laughs> yeah, and see, the problem is, too, is my pattern is getting off that I'm starting to fall asleep there. I'm doing yeah. the head nod a lot earlier than I used to. Yeah, well, yeah, you need to. I know I do. I just can't do that right now until I, I get a full-time job. But I did send my application out. So, I mean, I did send my resume and my application. I'm glad that you at least did that. That's good. Well, I updated my resume. That's always good, too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's my crushes and heartbreaks. Uh, trying to think what else. The cat just bit my leg. Oh, good. Glad it was you and not me. Like, <laughs> <My> what? Uh, <laughs> what was that? Oh, the cat just bit my leg. That's it for me. I don't have any crushes and heartbreaks. Um, let's see. My crush is, um, how much fun we had on Saturday, because that was oh, fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sheila oh, is my fun God. when she... Sheila is fun when she's sleep deprived because you can make her laugh until the tears literally run out of her face. Like, I love it when Jess said, "I broke her." I yes, broke her. we did because she was she was literally tears were coming out of her eyes. She was See, laughing. Here's the situation: when I get really tired, I get slap happy. Yes, so you she could does. say "boo," and I sat laughing hysterically. Oh my god, it was! But so we funny. were yeah, it was just so funny. Um, they were making me laugh, and they just kept pushing it and pushing it, and then I, I, I towards the very end, I don't think I could breathe. Yeah, that was I was fun. laughing so hard. That was and I a... actually enjoy getting to that point, because it makes me feel good. There is a, a release that comes from laughing so hard that your sides yeah. ache. Yeah, it's really good for you. We had that kind of a day on Saturday. Mm. <laughs> so, and and the um, we'll talk about it a little bit more in um, Gossip and Innuendo, but we had fun at the... Well, it's funny because That's it wasn't cool. anything that was, like, earth-shatteringly funny. It was stupid No, it's just, things. it was sleep deprivation, but it was hilarious. <laughs> and then, I don't even know what Jess said, but it was just... I think Amy started it. Oh, it was the innuendos, and oh, I just went over the top. Yeah. It was fun. It was fun. We had a lot of we fun. We had fun. We were laughing so loud that one of the other vendors came down to the, our end of the... Um, but it's building. a vendor we know. It's, it's a vendor fiber. It was Cindy, yeah. Um, to see why we were having so much fun. Because you guys, uh, what did she say? You're too loud. Come back up to my booth. Basically, she You're was jealous. You're making me jealous. Yeah. My crush was how much fun we had on, on Saturday, because that was a good... And, yeah, and you know, yeah. we shouldn't have had fun because it was 40 degrees and pouring rain, and I wasn't wearing pants. So there should have been no fun had on that day. <laughs> yeah, but we're in barns. I mean, no, I mean it's not like we were standing. The only right. thing that mine, I was, I mean, it was chilly. I I didn't bring any like hats or mittens. I did have my, uh, I want to call it a shell to protect yeah, from the rain. Like a wind but I kept shell. moving because my feet were cold. Yeah, and I was tired, and it, it just I had to move. Otherwise, I was gonna fall where I stood. Yeah, but we had I've a lot of fun. There. We had a lot of fun. I did, um, I did, I can't say I cheated. So I'm on Weight Watchers. I lost three pounds in two weeks. But they sell maple candy, maple sugar candy. You didn't buy any. I, was, I, I know. Was, I was proud of you. I didn't have fried dough either, so that was uh, kind we, of no, a No, we didn't have fried me. dough. But um, I bought a little maple leaf, like, about that big. That was my indulgence. Um, I can't let that go. That's just something that's... Oh, I'm just thinking about it now. That's like, you know. I know. Like, I I was thinking about getting one, but it was just better for me to walk away. I knew I might not get my steps in that day because of the rain. So I was like, this is a day. Like, if I go over my steps, I can eat more. Oh, right. This was not going to be a day that that was going to happen. So that was my crush. My This is my heartbreak, and it's a rant. <laughs> I have a rant, She has everyone. to get on her soapbox. I'm sorry. I have to rant about this. And it is about being kind to people. And here is my rant. I have been walking five miles a day. I go out there every day. I look like this. I'm not going to lie to you. I am clinically obese. I own that about myself. I am trying to improve it. Um, I go out there every day. I wear my little bike shorts. I wear my little, you know, 
my running gear that I used when I used to be able to run before I hurt my hip because I'm old. And, you know, every once in a while, it doesn't happen very often, but every once in a while, like, t a car of teenagers will go yeah. by and they'll say something. And I can't always hear exactly what to say because I wear earphones and I walk like this. Oh, because I am into my music and I'm sure they're making fun of me. But you know what? When you see a woman who is overweight out there working her butt off, you should be clapping and cheering for her. And those kind of comments are exactly the reason why a lot of women who are overweight feel uncomfortable working out by walking or running or going to the gym because they are concerned about that kind of attitude mm. towards them. You know, I am overweight, but I don't have a poor body image. I, right. I don't feel embarrassed about how I look. Like, I mean, I, I don't wear bikinis, but if I had a bikini on, I would wear that bikini and rock it. Like, I would just be... You know, I would just hang out like that because I, I don't let other people's comments to that effect bother me. But there are people out there that don't feel that way. So if you see a fat girl like me working her butt off to lose weight, you should be thinking in your mind, you go, girl. That's what you should be thinking. Yeah. And also, if you're a teenager, unless you have really good genetics, <laughs> this is how you're going to look when you're 46. And I hope when that day comes, I am driving by in my car with my little white granny head, and I am going to yell something out the window at you. So, you know, I'm pretty sure our demographic isn't people of that age. But, <laughs> but no. if you are of that age, I hope that you are nicer than to comment to people. And, um, you know, if you are out there trying to lose weight and that is holding you back, I am sorry that people in the world have to be haters like that. Um, and I hope that you go out there and rock it like I do every day. I do. I'm walking. I'm listening to my, like, um, 70s, 80s, and 90s disco mix. And I'm listening, like, you sexy thing, you sexy thing. And I'm walking to the beat, and I don't even care who sees me. I don't. It doesn't bother me at all. But it does make me mad that people feel they have to comment. Yeah. Because you don't know why that person weighs what they do. Yeah, I lost a lot of weight two years ago. I would still be that thin if I hadn't blown my knee out skiing. Right. Doing something athletic that not a lot of people can do. You don't know that's why I gained weight back. You don't right. know that about me. So, you know, be careful. You don't know what disease I might have True. or what hormonal problem or you know you don't know that about people do not judge people for how they look um and that goes for judging people who are really thin too you don't know why they're that thin they could be going through chemotherapy or have something really badly right. wrong with them just don't judge people don't judge how people look and um, chef don't judge <laughs> you ever seen that commercial no chef don't judge <laughs> I thought you were talking about the guy from that cartoon that my husband likes. Um, that has Chef South on. Park? South no. Park. <laughs> Anyone who watches kids programming, sorry, watches Chef a commercial, Boyardee. Chef Boyardee puts it in the microwave and the kids are dancing, yeah. just crazy, 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 and they stop and he goes, Chef, don't judge! <laughs> because they're just going crazy while they're waiting for their minute and a half of food to heat up. <laughs> Oh. Chef don't judge. Chef don't judge. When you don't judge. <laughs> I never judge people. Whenever I see a girl out there running who's heavy like me, I want to go, you go, girl. Run as hard as you can. Which would probably embarrass her more. Yes, which is why I don't <laughs> actually say that, but I think it in my head. I I have a little soap brand, soapbox right Oh, okay. Now. I'm, off, I'm off my soapbox. Something similar. If you see a biker on the road, a mo not a motorcycle biker, but a pedal bike, street yes. bike as we call it, don't beep your horn. You beep the horn. Th we know you're back there. I ride a bike. That's why okay. I'm saying this. <laughs> I'm like, why? I, I haven't ridden one in a little while, but I do have a bike that I ride. When I lost a lot of weight, I was riding my bike. We know you're back there. Don't beep, because if you beep, this is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> of me going into your car after you beep. Don't beep. <laughs> Who beeps at 
surprised. You her. would be surprised how many people because they're saying, "Oh, I'm gonna let you know I'm behind you." Beep. Oh, I know you're behind me. me. Yeah, because you're not deaf. But not deaf. I. You got peripheral vision. Yeah, that's true. And you're not legally. You're not supposed to be on the sidewalk. Right. You're not. So you know, my soapbox. Don't beep up mo- uh, road bikes because <laughs> you're gonna get into an accident that way more so yes, than. You are. We know you're there. Sorry. It just reminded me where you said people don't... Again, know. probably this rant is going out to the wrong demographic of people. <laughs> but in case you are of the demographic that makes please fun of fat be. ladies and beeps at bikers, please take these words into account the next time you think about having that behavior. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. I think that's it for my crushes and heartbreaks. Bubbles and bling. Bubbles and bling. I have one bubble and bling. You do? Do I, I know do. about it? Oh, yeah. All right. So I carried it around. No, you didn't. You brought to the it to the car. Yeah, all of three seconds. It was raining uh-huh. and 40 degrees. But why were you going to the car? So I could get my steps in. And to bring your bottle in playing. Yeah. That's true. All right. So anyways, <laughs> I've always looked at the ceramics at festivals. Yes. And I'm always intrigued by them. Well, I happen to come across something that I really enjoyed. So I bought one. Um... Ask me who it's from now. I have no I'll tell you which booth you bought it in. Oh, I know which booth I bought it in. (laughs) I bought it from Spinner's Hill? Yes, you did. Spinner's Hill booth. So it's a little ball of yarn. Turn it this way. I'm going to go the wrong way. Knit it into a pair of socks. I love that. I do too. It was really inexpensive for ceramic. It was $11. And it's really pretty. And it's microwavable safe. I have it with me today. It's oven safe too, I'd like to mention. Uh, I have it with me today to show it to you, but it has been at work since Monday. So I brought it back from work. And right now it's only got ice water in it, but hopefully I won't dribble Because it is so hot here that you want to melt like a popsicle. Well, also, it's very hot. I want to make sure I'm filled with fluid and not retaining. Because you know what also can happen if you do not have enough fluid? You can have lowered potassium levels Mm. and you can get a Charlie horse in your calf. That really hurts. Ask me how I know. (laughs) How I know. I happened to be walking five miles the other day, and I got a Charlie horse. And it's taken like three days for that to work all the way out. Oh, man, that hurt so bad. That's all my bubbles and blankets. So I I did did research on it. I did not buy any yarn because I do not need any yarn. This is what I've been knitting on for, what, six weeks now? Yes. Yeah. The way (laughs) my go, the way I'm knitting... I don't, I have a decent amount of stash. The way I'm knitting, it's definitely past my life expectancy. <laughs> or as we, we like to call it, stable or sable. It depends on your preference, it's, which is ST, stash, um, acquired beyond life expectancy, or sable is stash acquired beyond yeah, life Yeah, I don't have that much. I probably have, what, under 200 skeins of yarn, which it's a lot, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but it's not compar- in comparison to other people I know. I am just going to tell you straight up, because I am who I am, I have a yarn stash that is sable, and I have a fiber stash that is closing in on sable. So, yes, there is that. Or as my daughter calls it, my fiber and yarn hoard. <laughs> You have a stash that can be passed down to most likely your well, children and grandchildren. Again, I must point out, with regard to the yarn, there is a good section of it, maybe 25 to 30% that I inherited from my mother's stash. So <laughs> this is something that happens in my family. So the outside people who see the kind of stash that I have think, wow, that's really crazy. But in my family, this is normal behavior. You have a stash. Because you don't know what might happen. The yarn industry could suddenly close up. I'd be good to go. There could be an apocalypse. Good yeah. to go. <laughs> um, my goal, hopefully, next week, I'm just, you know, ignoring that one, is to actually go through. And we were talking, um, who was, who, were we talking about it or was it somewhere else? We were talking about cleaning and how overwhelming it is if you yes. have to clean one thing. And somebody said clean a drawer. Yeah. So I was thinking that I would take, I have like five, it's a unit about this wide with five shelves on it. That's right. where I hold my stash. So if I can clean one 
unit at a time and de-stash, but it's like my wallet, I'm not going to de-stash that. It's mostly my cell phone. <laughs> so my goal is to at least go through one of those of my sock yarn and I think that is good. And um, my goal has been to um, drop out of my club so I wouldn't acquire so much fiber. But as I go into my bobbles and bling, I will show you that so far that plan has actually been working against me. I think having the club come in every month made me less likely to buy other, yarn, uh, other fibers because I felt guilty and now that the club is gone, every time I go somewhere, I buy more fiber. Um, the first, <laughs> because I bought like at least three pounds of fiber since I dumped the club. And it's been what, two months? I would have had like a pound of fiber. Now I have three, it like tripled. Yeah. So I, I don't know, I got to like, you good thing. That? You know what? Tomorrow is the last fiber festival I'm going to be attending until August. So that is a good thing. What's in August? Um, that's when my guild does, um, fiber frolic in Newberry Fort. Oh, cause my, I probably won't attend another one until October. October is another big month for me because then that's like, it's, it's May and October are the two big months for me where I go to a lot of festivals. I know you've been going. I've been every week. I went so to Connecticut, we New Hampshire. I went to the Webb's tent sale. I went to Mass Sheep and Wool. And now I'm going to Fiber Frolic. That is five weekends in a row that I have been at a fiber event. I consider the fact of how little I bought <laughs> Oh yeah. pretty good for me because, you know, I have been working a lot of um, tech editing jobs, so I have some, I actually have cash that I can spend um, that, that I earned instead of that's from the Bank of Jim, which is my husband. <laughs> I don't have one of those. <laughs> It's called the Bank of Me. It's the Bank of Sheila. I have the I Bank of it, Kim. I Well, you have a job, unlike me. So I've actually had the I've Bank of I've never had a Bank of Kim. <laughs> yes, I I've actually, I actually now have the Bank of Wendy that I can draw you know, from. I know what I get from Cam? $10 every two weeks for automatic deposit from his paycheck, so I don't have a fee on my account. <laughs> okay, that is a whole other conversation <laughs> that we're not even going to have right now. Because I have so has... many things to say about I'm that. I'm surprised he hasn't asked for it back. <laughs> yes. So my husband and I share an account and we so do in and a since way. he works many hours and I am a stay at home mom, I get all of my paychecks paychecks from the bank of Jim. <laughs> so bottles and bling. Um if you're on Instagram and you follow um Amy who is Amy Bookie I think or Spunky Eclectic. I can't remember what her Instagram name is. I don't think I follow her. I'm... Um well, she's a friend of mine, so I follow her. Sheila doesn't really know her as well as I do. I don't follow um, anyone on Instagram. Let's just be I honest love Instagram. about it. Instagram for me is what Facebook should be. That's my Facebook is Instagram. I like looking at everybody's pictures and seeing what their lives. What's it, I just like it. So anyway, um, she mentioned that she had received some 50% yak, 50% silk. Yak is amazingly soft if you buy it from the right place <laughs> and you don't buy it from a Sherpa. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. I'm sorry, Roz. I had to mention it. Um, our friend Roz, on another episode, we told you how her husband tried to buy her a nice yarn, but it, it was a fail. Um, so 50% yak, 50% silk. This colorway is called Dark Dijon. It is so incredibly soft. I think it's even softer than the cashmere silk that I bought from her last, <laughs> the last time I saw her two weeks ago. Um, so I blame Amy for this because she, I told her when I saw the Instagram picture that she was tempting me and she just, she didn't even care. <laughs> she cares not at all. She made me buy it. It's gorgeous. I love it. Um, you can get it on her website, which is www.spunkyeclectic.com in case you can't go. She has a store too, but it's up in Maine. So that was one thing. I bought two of these, so that would be a total. This is one ounce, so I bought two ounces of this, which will be n n enough for a significant amount of lace. And then the second thing that I bought, this is, I blame this. See, I blame this on, none of this is actually my fault. I blame this uh, on Amy. Sure. <laughs> I'm blaming this pound and a half on Diane, my friend Diane. Um, we went to just to just Spinner's Hill, to Spinner's Hill, 
And I saw, I'm going to try to open it up for you. This is um, wool, silk, and alpaca. So, can you see that? It's green. It's, it's crazy. It's green and purple. It has orange in it. I don't know if you can see the orange part. Um, it's got all different colors. There's a little gray. It's really pretty. Um, a little hot pink, a little It'll orange. be interesting to see how that spins. That's what intrigued me about it. I'm a big fan of green and purple, so, you know, I know that I'll like it. Um, because it's a cloud form, like, I'll just, it's, it's like a really big, crazy bat that's like just a puff of a cloud. Um, it's all going to blend together, so it's going to be a very heathery mix. It's not going to have any real striping, I don't think. So I'm curious to see how it will spin up. Um, I got a pound and a half, so it should be enough for me to knit a sweater from. Oh, good. Um, I love Spinner's Hill. The sweater that I knit last year before Rhinebeck, my um, Skipper D sweater, oh, that, right. was from my, that was from a pound of Spinner's Hell, um, and I have quite a bit of that left over. So I think a pound and a half, uh, that was from two pounds of Spinner's Hill. I have a pound and a half of this. I think that'll be more than enough. So I don't know what I'm going to make with it. Um, I'm just going to throw it into the giant fiber stash <laughs> because I have so many, I still have to finish spinning the, the um, diabolical yarn that I have that fiber to make my sweater from that, which hopefully that's going to get finished up during, um, tour to Please. Tour de Fleece, because I'm going to do Into the World, and I think I'm going to try to finish that um, sweater, too. I have four skeins left to spin. Oh, good. So, yeah, that. but that was all I bought. I bought a pound and a half of the Spinner's Hill, and I bought two ounces of this. So, not so horrible. No. Um, the other bobbles and bling that I got, these are my favorite things from the weekend. Sheila oh. gave me a new, for my birthday, that she kept... Forgetting, she mentioned on the show twice she forgot to give it to me, but she gave it to me on Saturday. The first thing, this is my favorite thing ever. This is a, it's actually made out of bamboo. It is okay. a bamboo, my husband identified the wood by, right. by the grain. It is a bamboo phone case for my iPhone 4S that has a gnome, a mushroom, and a butterfly on it. It's like etched onto it. And it's really neat because... So it fits nice and tight. It fits perfectly. You have to slide it. Oh, all right. It fits so perfectly I can't get it off. Well, I won't take it off because it's on there, but you slide it in, and then the bottom part, because we thought it, we're like, is it broken? <laughs> we couldn't figure out how it was going to work, but see how it has? Oh, all right. It has like a little slot under there, and you just slide the bottom part in. So it fits nice and snug. It fits perfectly, and... I drop my phone all the time, and I was really worried that the case would break because it's made out of wood, but I haven't broken it. Bamboo is pretty strong. Bamboo is, my husband said bamboo is extremely strong, which is probably why they make wooden cases out of bamboo. It's hard to break. It stays on great. That's cool. I really like it. Did you just break it? No, I snapped it. It's fine. So yeah, that's really cute. So I got that. And it was a theme birthday because I also got this necklace. It is a little bottle. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. It has a gnome in it. Whoops. Could help. And as I show my financial stuff. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. There's the gnome. It has a gnome. He's sitting on some gravel and there's like a little branch behind him. So oh. yeah. I wore it the other day, but I found out I can't wear it at night because this <laughs> rolls behind my neck, and then I lay on it, and I'm like, ah! So I took it off. But this is going to be my official festival necklace. Well, there you go. I'm going to wear it tomorrow. Here he is. It's hard to see him. The glare. Well, for one thing, it's not on the camera. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Here he is. According to our friend Jessa Lou, he looks just like her stepfather. <laughs> no, her, her father-in-law. Father the stepfather. Her father, I don't even know if she has a stepfather. stepfather. Sorry <laughs> about that, Mrs. Jessa Lou. <laughs> Jessa Lou's mom, I'm sorry. I don't think that's true. I don't think no, she I has think one. So. Um, it's her father-in-law looks like this. It also looks like Amy's Funky Eclectic's tattoo. 
Oh, that's right. It was really funny because before I was given these items, when we were looking at Amy's tattoo, because we were seeing how it looked like um, Jess Lou's father-in-law. <laughs> I don't know how this came up in conversation. Um, I said, if I ever got a tattoo, which is highly unlikely, it would be of a gnome because I love gnomes. No. And then I got a gnome necklace and a gnome thong thing. You got a thing. little gnome necklace and to carry along with you wherever I you know, go. I know. I totally love it. It's better and than a tattoo because it's painless. It's, and it can come off. <laughs> and um, th I have gotten so many comments about this phone case. Like, you have would you? not believe it. I guess a lot of people don't have a wood phone case. No, it's something different. And you would think it would be really bulky and heavy, but it really isn't. It's bamboo. I know. It's amazing. I don't know where Sheila got these from, but I'm sure you can find them on Amazon the for the phone case and Etsy for the bottle. Oh, yeah. This is so cute. It came in this little package that had a little clay mushroom. Did you lose the mushroom? No, I have it. It's over there. Oh, I just okay. don't want to dig it out. I put it in my little... I have a little, like, dish where I put crap in. I don't know what to do with it. I know. See, my mom it had, had a... little pin with a mushroom on it. My mom had a type case. My... Grandfather used to work in uh, printing, mm -hmm. so they had a lot of type cases where you put the letters in Oh, it, yeah. And uh, she would put little things like that in a type case. I had one, but I think it got a lot of damaged. Oh, yeah, because I've always wanted to buy one of those. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. They're a drawer that they used to pull out, but you can yeah. put them on the wall yeah. like this, so they're like little boxes. Yep. Yeah, I've looked at those before. Oh, and I got another bobble and bling I totally forgot about. My husband. So I've been walking. Every day, um, inspired by my friend Sarah and my friend Diane, who both walk a lot, I realized I don't have to drive to the gym to walk on the treadmill, which is extremely boring. Running does not bother me. I can run on the treadmill for two hours. Walking on the treadmill, even for half an hour, is, is like, it makes me crazy. It's so boring. So I've been walking around my town. And, yeah. Okay, well... <laughs> We're getting there. All right. And um, so my husband bought me this backpack that I can wear. It has my wallet in it. It's very, it's slender and it's made out of cotton. Because mm. I was using my um, Vera Bradley backpack, but it's very heavy. So. Shall we go into? We have just enough time. Yeah. You won't be able to talk about some of your other gossip and innuendo. We so we really have three have winners. I think we already covered that in the whole Bobbles and Blues. Yeah, section. I hope so. Three winners um, for our knit along, which was baby themed items. Yep. And we did the random number generator, random.org. And the first prize we're giving away is a skein of yarn that was donated to us by Angelia McGar. And the name, it says Believe, You Know You Want To. DPP Duo Club. It Fresh is from the cauldron, yarn. Gherkin's Bucket. Gherkin's Bucket is the colorway and Fresh from no. the Cauldron. It just says DPP Duo Club, Fresh from the Cauldron's Gherkin's Bucket. The colorway is a nice trip to the forest. Oh. Fresh from the Cauldron, MCN. Oh, okay. So it's Fresh from the Cauldron is the name of the yarn. MCN. Yeah. MCN Lace. It's very soft. 565 yards. 50%, 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. That is a really nice pretty color. surprise. And the winner of that yarn is Wanna Knit Socks, number 239, Diane. She knitted a cute little cow toy. Oh, I loved that. It cow was so toy. adorable. Super cute. So, Diane, Wanna PM Knit me. Socks, PM Wendy, and we'll get this out into PM the mail. PM me with your real life name and address where I can mail this to you. So number two is a pattern by Angelia. Angelia, Angela, An Angelia McGar. Um, you, I think she's going to let you pick. You just need to get in touch with her. I will, if you get, I will just send her name, your name to them. And that was uh, number 280 was the winner on that. And it's Handbag Crazy or Sandy. And she knit a cute little baby sweater. Oh, yeah, that was cute. I loved looking at the baby thread. Oh, it was it was so nice. So I got inspiring. so much inspiration. Yes. So prize number three is number two fifty three was the winner. Give me yarn four eighteen, or also known as Erin. You win this knitting goddess hand dyed yarn. It's a really pretty colorway. It's uh, hundred percent merino superwash wool. It's hundred hundred grams, three hundred and sixty meters, which I think equates to about four hundred yards. Probably. Could take. 
in Blue Sky Colorway. And it's got all shades of blue. So give me yarn 418. We are going to give you yarn if you PM me with your real life name. Your street address. address. Yes. So those thank are our you for everyone who participated. And a reminder that we're doing lace this uh, the next two months, June and July. I will post a thread and I will put the usual rules in it. And you need um, to be a member of our group. There's nothing. Yes, you need to be Pictures a member. Pictures only, preferably. Yep. No chatter. And remember, if you make more than one item, post yeah, more than post one separate picture. pictures yes. in separate posts so you can have Get your name entered for more than one. Of them. I don't have any festivals to announce. Tomorrow is Fiber Frolic in Maine, which I will be attending. I think it's in Belfast, Maine, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I will not. I'm not driving. I apologize. Uh, I am working tomorrow, and I just can't get away from my family. Yeah. I mean, it. it's harder for you. Well, and I'm Since working I don't have Sunday, a I have to get up at... I have to be at work at 4.30 on But she Sunday. got to go last weekend, so that was really yeah. good. And we were going to talk a little bit about last weekend, but I think we covered pretty much yeah, everything. Yeah, it, um, it was a very slow festival because of the rain. And we it was walked freezing. around once. And, and it, it turned out the, the next day the weather was gorgeous. Oh, was it? <laughs> yes. Sunday would have been a better day to go to that festival. Yeah. That is one of my favorite festivals. It's small, but a lot of people that I know vend there. Yeah. Um, or go there because, you know, it's Massachusetts and it's, it's fairly local. It's fairly local. local. Fairly local. So um, for everybody that came up and said hello to us, thank you. That we was awesome. It. And for everybody we met up with, it was awesome meeting everybody. So and on that note. Yes, I think that's it. It's a long one today or this week. It's, it's so. really not going to end up being that long no, because but we had like had at least a, a minute, minute and a half. But anyways. <laughs> Do you want me to cut some stuff out? Because I can. No. <laughs> if you keep talking, you're going to have to cut out more. I'm just going to keep talking right. until this is 25 minutes longer than it already is, just because I want to make you mad. <laughs> you're the one who's editing. I know. All right. <laughs> On that note, have a good week. Knit with, with heart. heart. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Chef, don't judge. <laughs>